Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to power. To we'll continue on this journey, we're here to give you a bit of update. There's two, there's going to be two for the price of one in this video. Well, we might make it, well, let's see how it goes. We're going to try and talk about this. Very important. Um, this man here, our Biafran hero, um, you can hear him, the song in the background. That song is coming. Uh, it has a title track. I don't want to give it out just yet, but just keep listening to the. This is the military man called the Nassau, not get constitution. That's the idea of constitution. Nine and they take close on our IO. Make on wake up. Make on wake up. So this track I will be hearing in the background. But what we want to do today is to touch on something. The courts have ordered the federal government to return Kano to status quo and award Namde Kano 500 million Naira damages as carried by Channels News. So nobody will say it's a fraud. This is the news carried by Channels. Listen to this now. Have a go. So that's Nancy Namde Kano, um, the great Biafrani man. Uh, you know, um, so it's in this struggle, we are all working together. Mazi and the Kano, Loyes and all those, those of us from the middle belt, from the southwest, southeast, middle belt, all of us, we are clamoring and working forward for self determination. Very much what Namde Kano stands for. So let's read what it says here. Let's go ahead. The Federal High Court, presided over by Justice Evelyn Anya DK, has ordered the federal government. To restore Namdekano to his status quo before 19th of June 2021, meaning that he has to be released. In Wednesday's ruling on fundamental human rights and extraordinary rendition of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra Ipoh, she also ordered that the government to pay 500 million damages to him. Um, many of you will recall they did the same thing when it came to Shuwere. Um, the point we're making is that, that this is already this is evidence that this is an illegal detention. The courts have said he should be released, Namde Khan should be released, very much like it was an illegal detention with um, with uh, Shuwere as well. And now even he's not still allowed to leave the country even though because he was restricted to Abuja, now he's, he's allowed to go into the country but not to leave the country. That's not a cost that, that shows you that our constitution is a fraud. The government of the day refuses, takes, has, has, has given little regard to the constitution that they swore an oath to serve and protect. They're not serving the, the constitution by ignoring the ruling of the judges. So, here we go. Listen on now. The courts, in its further rulings, issued an injunction restraining the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, from prosecuting Kanu consequent upon his extraordinary rendition. So they have actually given a further ruling that prevents the federal, the, 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 the Attorney General of the Federation from prosecuting Kanu consequent upon his extraordinary rendition. So this is, this is not even a debate now. They have no basis upon which to hold Mazin and the Kanu. Kanu had, in March last year, this year, filed a suit through his Council Aloy Ejimako to enforce his fundamental human rights, stemming from what Ejimako had termed his extraordinary rendition, rendition from Kenya in June last year. In his judgment, the court dismissed the federal government's objection to its jurisdiction and upheld all the reliefs sought by Kanu. Speaking to the media after the judgment, Ejimako called on the federal government to promptly comply with the judgment, more particularly the part that requires Kano to be returned to Kenya. We defeated the federal government. They said they don't listen. They have listened today. Court told them that if they know the thing that they did in June last year, when they came, when they went to abduct the man from Kenya, they should return him back to Kenya the same way. He told BBC. That what they did is bad and illegal. The way they tortured him is illegal. Our prayers to the court are eight. The court granted all. But the one I am strongly pointing at is for them to take him back to Kenya. That is what the court said. So I am, am I hoping they will obey? If you offend, the court tells you. If you offend and the court tells you, you have to accept. If you offend the federal government, they go to court. 
Why do they go to court? When the court rules against them, they will start dragging food. If they insist on not obeying the court, then they should dismantle all the courts in the country and we will start exchanging blows. Below are the reliefs sought by Kano. Let's read all of them. One, a declaration that the arrest of the applicant in Kenya by the respondent's agent without due process of law is arbitrary and the respondent enforced disappearance from the applicant for eight days and their refusal to produce applic the applicant before a Kenyan court for the purpose of applicant's extradition is illegal, unlawful, unconstitutional, and amounts to infringement of the applicant's fundamental rights against arbitrary rights to arrest, to his personal liberty, and to fair hearing as enshrined and guaranteed under the, under the pertinent, pertinent provisions of CFRN and the Charter. A declaration that the detention of the applicant in a non-official secret facility in Kenya and the torture of the applicant in Kenya by the respondent's agent is illegal, unlawful, unconstitutional and amounts to infringement of the applicant's fundamental right against unlawful detention, tortured and to a fair hearing as enshrined and guaranteed under the pertinent provisions of CFRN and the Charter. A declaration that the pursuant to the Article 12.4 of the Charter, the expulsion or extraordinary, extraordinary rendition of the applicant from Kenya to Nigeria by respondents without a decision taken in accordance with the law of Kenya is illegal, unlawful, unconstitutional, and amounts to infringement of the applicant's fundamental right to be to, to a fair hearing and not to be expelled from a state party to the Charter except by virtue of a decision taken in accordance with the law as enshrined and guaranteed under the pertinent provisions of CFRN and the Charter. Four, a declaration that any criminal prosecution of the applicant for the purpose of which respondents unlawfully expel the applicant from Kenya to Nigeria is illegal, unlawful, unconstitutional, and amounts to infringement of the applicant's fundamental right to a fair hearing as enshrined and guaranteed under the pertinent provisions of CFRN and the Charter. An injunction, an order of injunction restraining and prohibit, prohibiting the respondent from taking any further step in any criminal prosecution, prosecution of the applicant enabled by the said unlawful expulsion of the applicant, of the applicant from Kenya to Nigeria. Six, an order mandating and compelling the respondent to forthwith restitute or otherwise restore the applicant to his liberty, same being his state of being as of 19th of June 2021. That was when he was legally renditioned. And thereupon, repatriate, repatriate the applicant to his country of unlawful domicile, to wit, the United Kingdom, to await the outcome of any formal request the respondents may file before the competent authorities in Britain for the unlawful extradition of the applicant to Nigeria. This is where it is really quite shameful. The UK have gone completely silent, but the UK are telling us to, to believe in that fraudulent constitution, that uh, contract, uh, contract called Nigeria. Yet they say nothing when the federal government that they are supporting illegally renditions a citizen of the United Kingdom. Can you see the duality of their purpose there. Can you see it? But anyway, let's carry on. Another mandating and compelling the respondents to issue an official letter of apology to the appellant applicant for the infringement of his fundamental and um, fundamental rights and publication of said letter of apology in three national dailies. An order mandating as eight, number eight, an order mandating and compelling the respondents to pay the sum of five hundred million naira to the applicant being mandatory sum damages claimed by the applicant against the respondents jointly and severally for the physical, mental, emotional, psychological, property and other damages suffered by the applicant as a result of the infringement of the applicant's fundamental rights by the respondents. So that is what you see there. So I just wanted to read the whole thing to you in its entirety. So it's got eight counts upon which the federal government have actually infringed. And then let me also add, there is also, apparently, he's got an heart issue where he's having to take some sort of partition for, for balancing. For health reasons, he should also be released as well. I will add that. I don't know if it's part of the, the eight count. But on purely health reasons, he should also be released as well. So I'm wanting to add that to this discussion. Now, what do you say? How do you see what is being said now? 
just give you the the update again so the court orders the federal government to return Kano to status quo awards him 500 million naira damages this was carried by um, channels and there are other news people kind as well but i wanted to read through that with you all um let me know what your thoughts are on this please do share this podcast um the song but what, what that shows there's two things i want to bring to your attention here number one the fact that that constitution is a fraud that's why the song is referring to that in the background the constitution is a fraud because if it was a valid constitution the government would not infringe the rights of the citizens of the country from whom uh, 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 of nigeria of whom this promise to serve they do not care about the constitution they care on imposing it on you and as far as the federal government of nigeria the full government is concerned they want it to be something that they, they can impose upon us as indigenous people and it doesn't apply to them and these are the things that we're saying that we this is why we're saying we have every right to go for self-determination self-determination is the only solution to this so let me know what you think about what you've heard now what do you think um should what do you think the federal government should do should they com shouldn't they comply do you agree with me that they should comply with the ruling of the court and if they comply it confirms to us that the federal government is indeed beginning to be demo democratic for as long as they hold on to the likes of Nandekano and many others who have been illegally held in jails. Nigeria is not a democracy and indeed that constitution is a fraud. None of us signed up to it. We need to dismantle that constitution. Nigeria is a fraud. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think. Before I go, let me do this please. Um, Please go ahead, subscribe to Citizen AY on YouTube, hit the notification button, give us a thumbs up. Uh, please help us share this podcast. But it's good news that we've had. The good news, of course, is that Mazin Namdekano has indeed been uh, has been awarded 500 million naira damages against the federal government. And they've also told Malami in no uncertain terms that he should not. The court, in its further ruling, issued an injunction restraining the Attorney General of the Federation, Malami, Abubakar Malami, from prosecuting Kano consequent upon his extraordinary rendition. So they've actually issued a ruling against Malami and his office that they should not go ahead with any further prosecution of Mazin and the Kano. So these are realities of what we are, you know, we're saying here that the the federal government of Nigeria is a fraud. The actions that they took, illegal rendition, shows that they do not believe in any rule of law. There is no, any attempt to say their democracy is a fraud. It's exposed by their actions. So please, ladies and gentlemen, when you're watching this podcast, please do share it. Don't forget to also listen to this song that we're playing at behind. When we release the track fully in due course, the full song, you will hear it on Citizen AY. And it really speaks to the, the ills of the of the what we call a, Niger, the, the, a, a, a government in Nigeria. We don't have a government. What we have is a military junta, a unitary system of governance that is imposed on all of us without our say. So no referendum back for the, this constitution. And we need to dismantle that contraption. It is a fraud. That constitution is a fraud. We have every right to go for self-determination. So ladies and gentlemen, you're watching this the platform where we speak truth to power. I'll stop here. Please do share this podcast if it resonates with you. Um, once again, you know, we're really happy that Mazen Amdekano is actually, you know, um, you know, he's uh, what's the word? He's he's been he's, he's won again, again. He was won. He firstly he won the, uh, the first case. The government took the case against him. He won again, and now for that, the, the Attorney General has been told that in no certain terms that he must not, he must not, under any circumstances, attempt to try and carry out any uh, uh, prosecution. You know, so he's been he's been restrained from trying to carry out any prosecution against Kano. So uh, we, we're in total support. We are clamoring for self-determination. All of us, Yorubas, Biafrans, and Middle Belt, we are going for self-determination. And the houses, if they wish to have that as well. So we, the there's only solution is the solution of that contraction because the constitution is a fraud. A fraud imposed on us by Abdu, uh, General Abdul Salam uh, Malami. Uh, Abdul Salami, uh, sorry, General Abdul Salami. The name is General Abdul Salami who imposed this fraudulent constitution on us. Um, so Abubakar Malami, the Attorney General of the Federation, is trying to find ways to illegally continue to hold on to Matic and Nandikanu. There's no other way for him now. He has to release him. 
but we know that in contractual Nigeria they don't they don't believe in the rule of law and that's why we're saying they're not a democracy and that's the reason why we are going for self-determination ladies and gentlemen you're watching this is network the platform where we speak truth to power please do share this broadcast as i want you to receive it but ladies and gentlemen i would normally be coming on air and having a long discussion or at minute health wise i'm not really really good at the minute i'm trying to do what i can and that's why the video or the music the short clips are what i will be doing until i can get myself my health back to a state where i can do things um, on a long sustained basis so now and then i might come out but i find myself that having to rest and take it easy because of the chronic pain it's really difficult but that's not going to stop us we must continue to preach for this we do this for the coming generation not myself what we're doing is for the coming generation of yobas of biafrans of middle belt the coming generation that they can live in a free nation of their own choosing by their own people not an imposition nigeria is an imposition on indigenous people let me say that again nigeria is an imposition on indigenous people of yoruba land of biafra land and of middle Earth and the houses and that's why we are totally justified in going for self-determination ladies and gentlemen you watch this is a why the platform where we speak truth about i'll be back later on don't forget one more thing that i like you to do go ahead subscribe to this is why hit the notification button give us a thumbs up please as you get the broadcast please do share 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 it's good news that is with the government is having to pay 500 pounds but we don't think that do you think they will comply with it they, they should comply but by what they did to show what they don't comply but that confirms to you and i that we are not a democracy and that's one of the reasons why we must go for self-determination ladies and gentlemen you want to know why the platform where we speak truth to power i'll be back later on thank you for watching please do share this podcast subscribe and share share this podcast thanks for watching